think about the words to that song, Jesus bring new wine out of me. That's really hard words. Because to get wine, you have to be crushed. So what you're doing is you're asking Jesus to crush you. That's hard. Because usually when we feel the pressure of the crush, we start begging God to deliver us <laughs> from no matter what it is. You got to deliver me, God, from where I'm at. But God says this, trust me unconditionally because I love you unconditionally. So if you truly want to be new wine, then allow God to crush you and press you. And you will be so grateful and so thankful that you did. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that we could come here today to worship you and to love on you and allow you to love on us. We bless your name today because you are good to us. Make us new wine. Make us usable. Make us your vessel to touch our city and our world. In Jesus' name, amen. I tell you, before you're seated, why don't you turn around and welcome someone to abundant life? ushers I tell you it's so good to see you this morning all your happy faces it's so good for those of you joining us on Facebook uh, to be here I see that our youth have already exited the building uh, for their youth group meeting uh, we bless them to do that our ushers are at front uh, thank you guys for being so faithful in your giving and for being here at church we just love you so much. Ushers, you're welcome to serve the, the people. Thank you. I just have a few announcements that I want to make. Uh, immediately following our morning service here, um, we're going to be having a memorial service for Mary Helen Couch. This is the mother of uh, Jeff Timmons, our dear brother. Jeff, we love you. We're praying for you. Tammy, we love and praying for you and your entire family during this time. You're welcome to stay and um, worship with us because honestly, uh, Mary Helen wanted a worship service and that is what this is. So you're welcome to stay and participate. That will begin at 1130 immediately following our service this morning. Also, I want to mention a name. Uh, a lot of you may know the name. A lot of you may not. You may know his face and you may not, but it's Philip Calder. Uh, he is a very important person to all of us here. He uh, helps with our Facebook streaming. And um, not this past Wednesday, but a Wednesday ago, he was involved in a motorcycle accident and has been in the hospital ever since. And uh, it's been up and down. And, uh, but we're believing God that he's going to be walking out of the hospital really soon. Uh, but continue to pray for Philip. Tonight, or this evening at 5 o'clock, we're going to play music bingo. If you have never done it before, you should come and try it. It's going to be a lot of fun. I will tell you if you want to prepare for it, because you've got to listen to songs. It's going to be excerpts of songs, and you've got to know what the song title is and who the artist is that sang it. And that's kind of how you win the game. But if you want to cheat, <laughs> If you want to cheat and have a little bit of heads up, go ahead and download the app Shazam. Before you get here, remember Shazam and uh, be ready to play. We'll start that at 5 o'clock from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Going to be giving out some prizes. I hope it doesn't get unruly. Your children are welcome to come. I have gone through all of the songs and tried to make sure they're better than church appropriate. So... Come out for that. It's going to be a great time. Also, coming up this Thursday night at 7 o'clock, Citywide Prayer 
at our neighbor church down the street here, Sandhurst. Uh, you'll want to be uh, a part of that. Pray for our city. Thank you, Jolly, Margaret, for being a part of that and leading that in our city. Um, Saturday, March the 18th, Resurrection of Jesus program put on by Caring Hearts of the PD will be taking place here at the church. It's a free uh, seminar, if you would, a mini seminar. Uh, so come out. We'll have more details about that, the times and that thing coming forward. Okay, Sunday, March the 19th, Chip Judd will be here on the stage ministering at 10 a.m. It is going to be a great day. We all love Chip and Colleen. And then Chip is staying over that evening for a men's ministry at 5.30 here in the sanctuary. And then Sunday, March 26th at 5 p.m., we're going to have women's ministry. Guys, don't be sneaking in the back. It's for ladies only. And um, our own Brooke Evans and Margaret Eabi. Is that right, Jolly? I got a thumbs up from Margaret, so we're good. Uh, it's going to be ministering that night. Both of these ladies are absolutely great speakers and will be a blessing to your heart. So check us out on our website. If you forget these dates, they're all on there. Check us out and uh, make Make sure to be a part of all of them. Are you ready for the word? Yes. Amen. Me too. Come on, Pastor Carl. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's good to be here with you folks this morning. I do want to uh, mention a couple of things that Pastor Steve did not mention. Uh, and the first one is next Sunday morning, he will be bringing the word of the Lord to us. He always has a good word, so we look forward to that. And then this is part family and all church. I am related, but uh, my niece was married this past weekend, and Deborah and Marion Poston, uh, my sister and brother-in-law, faithful here in the church. Amanda grew up in our church here. She married Zach Berg this past Thursday in the beautiful chapel Dulcinea in a city I love, Austin, Texas. So uh, congratulations to Amanda and Zach, and uh, also to Deborah and Marion. And I want to, before we open the word, uh, say a special welcome uh, to uh, a pastor couple of ours we've known for many years. In fact, all of us know them as blood because of uh, their parents, Mike and Angie Jones, who were pillars in our church family here. But uh, Pastor Trey and Hope Jones from Macon, Georgia, who've recently uh, turned their church over to another pastor. They've moved to Oklahoma City where they serve the world in the International Pentecostal Holiness Church, the church that is my heritage. Stand if you would, Pastor Trey and Hope Jones. We welcome you from Oklahoma City. <laughs> And I prophesied over him before church this morning. I won't tell you what it was because I could get him in trouble at headquarters. But uh, ah, our service will be a little brief this morning because of our celebration of life for Miss Mary Helen at 11.30. And I'll begin where uh, we left off last Sunday. If you were here last Sunday... You enjoyed the ministry of Laverne Tripp. And the last thing he said before he left the platform was, Jesus, you are welcome here. And he had all of us repeat it as a declaration. Will you say that out loud with me? Jesus, you are welcome here. Say it one more time. Jesus. And I want to continue as we pick up that thought. After all, the Bible says, everyone who calls on the name of Jesus shall be saved, shall be rescued, shall be delivered. And I bring you the word of the Lord this morning, beginning in Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 23. This is what the Lord says. Well, now we're on solid ground so far. This is what the Lord says. 
Don't let the wise boast in their wisdom, or the powerful boast in their power, or the rich boast in their riches, but those who wish to boast should boast in this alone, that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth and that I delight in these things. And he says it again, I, the Lord, have spoken. I want to talk to you about life's most meaningful pursuit. After all, what are we doing here? If we are not living our life in such a way that we get to know God more every day and understand in greater measure every day that he is the Lord, then we're wasting our time together this morning and we're wasting every breath of our life on earth. The most meaningful pursuit in our life is to get to know God and to come to an understanding that he is the Lord. Paul said in 1 Corinthians in the first chapter that the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Paul said that there are not many wise according to the flesh who were called, not many mighty, not many noble. And he said, this is the reason, that no flesh should glory in his presence. And he said, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Now, of all the bragging rights we could have, the only one that will stand through eternity is we will boast and that we know God. And that we understand that he alone is the Lord over the earth and personally over our lives. Jesus, you are welcome here. Now, I grew up in the Pentecostal church and revivals were common. And common is not the best word because they were at times supernatural. But we would have frequent revivals. In our day, modern day, revivals are not as well known as they used to be. But what is happening, and we've seen it over a few years, is God will attempt to reveal himself in such a way that everyone will know. He is God and he is Lord over the earth. We're seeing it happen in pockets and small places. I remember there was the Pentecostal outpouring in Pensacola, Florida, oh, a couple of decades ago. This revival went on for six or seven or eight years, six nights a week. Thousands flocked to that church every night for six years plus. I went to that revival because I heard that God was doing something. So I took Travis Matthews and Marion Poston and Joe Barbacci with me. The four of us drove down to Pensacola, and it was an all-day drive. We got there one evening and decided we would go check out what's going on at the church, even though it was too late for us to attend that service. And I've told you this before. We got about two blocks from the church, and Cars were beside the road and police officers with blue lights everywhere and we were two blocks away. And I rolled my window down to a, an officer. Uh, he said, are you here for the first time for the revival? I said, yes, we are. And he handed me a piece of paper. He said, these are the rules. I read rule number one. No one is allowed to line up for a 7 p.m. revival service before 6 a.m. <laughs> oh, my. So we broke that rule. 
The next morning we were up early and at 545 we were at the church and there were 200 other people who had broken that rule before we got there. Already a line forming before 6 a.m. to get into a church service where God was revealing himself in glory and power. We waited that day in line and it was just as great a blessing to wait all day as it was to go into that auditorium and experience the power of knowing God in a fresh way. Jesus, you are welcome here. Now, it happened also in Toronto. It was called the Toronto Blessing, and uh, one of my good friends was a leader in that movement. That went on for a few years, and people would fly in from all over the world to Toronto and my friend, Jack Frost, who's in heaven today, was one of the leaders there for the Toronto Blessing. And it's happening again in Asbury University. Have you heard about it? This is the auditorium at Asbury University, which is a seminary school. People going to uh, prepare themselves for ministry are as laity with the foundation of a Christian education. It began on February the 8th, and for almost two weeks now, revival has been nonstop. There have been people in that auditorium 24 hours a day for almost two weeks. It began as a normal church service with the students coming to this auditorium for a chapel service. And when the service had ended, Many of the students stayed to continue in their worship, and then they stayed all night. And all the next day, crowds began coming back. On the ninth, students remained in the auditorium throughout the second night, and revival continued going into the third day, February 10th. There uh, were pictures online showing the auditorium overflow capacity and they received local media coverage on day three and that opened it up to the world on day five they had to open two more buildings on campus just to facilitate the crowds people were hungry to get to know god better then because of social media Word spread around the world. People began flying in and driving in. The Episcopal Church locally became involved. A Baptist church locally became involved, even though the university, I believe, is Methodist-related. And then a couple of other universities sent their students over, Campbellsville University and a Pentecostal Charismatic University, Lee University in Cleveland, Tennessee, and some of our young people have graduated from Lee University. Oh, there was such an attraction to the power of God in a fresh way. It's still going on. Finally, on February the 15th, they opened up another auditorium and a Baptist church in town and added big screens for a, a simulcast, a live stream to reach the crowds. Drone footage captured lines several blocks long after the main auditorium was filled. And they're targeting now, they realized who's leading this revival, it's young people. It is Generation Z, so they passed a little rule, it's, it's student-led, by the way. They passed a rule that said, if you are 26 or over, we don't want you coming into the main auditorium, but you're welcome in one of the satellite buildings for the simulcast. And my God, Generation Z is getting to know God. Have we prayed for that? Then we see that it's happened here and there a few specific places that got the attention globally. But our prayer today is, Jesus, you are welcome here. 
I want to say that it is a sad commentary on the modern day body of Christ, and that includes all of us, that in order to find a place where it's easier to get to know God and to see him move in his power, we have to get on a plane and travel to a faraway city for that experience or get in a car and drive hours only to be turned away because we can't get any more people in the building. When I believe in our day, in our lifetime, we're going to see that Jesus is showing up in all of us, in our personal lives. It must begin with each of us personally. A personal revival. Jesus, you are welcome here. Thank you for what you're doing in Kentucky at Asbury University and all that you're doing everywhere else where people are hungry to get to know God better. But Jesus, you're welcome here. It must become personal. Now, Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 7, but what things were gain to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for who I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. In verse 10, that I may know him. We should take an inventory, if not more often, at least every night when we go to bed. We should ask ourselves the question, a self-inventory. Do I know God better tonight than I did when I woke up this morning. If not, it's a day that has at least in part been wasted. Our life's purpose on earth is to know God and to understand that he is the Lord. Paul, who had a lot to boast about, he even lists it in one of the books to the Corinthians, he said, if I wanted to brag, I've got bragging rights. He said, among Jews, I'm the upper crust. I'm a Jew among the Jews. I was circumcised on the eighth day of my life, just like all good Jewish baby boys were. And then he went on to list all of his accomplishments. If he wanted to brag about himself, he said, I could do that easily. I've got bragging rights. But he said, I will count everything I've accomplished and everything I've done in my life, I call it all rubbish that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Paul knew what it was to keep a profit and loss statement. And when you look at one side, oh my, he had so much he could boast about. But then he tore that page up in the lost column and said, I'm going to throw all of that away if necessary so that I can do one thing with my life, and that is know Christ. That's why we're alive. That I may know him. Listen, he can be made known to us. Oh, I know he's God, but he can be made known to us. John chapter 17 and verse 3, Jesus said, And this is eternal life, that, you may, that they may know you, Jesus praying to the Father, that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Faith that works in us, that's how we are born again. That's how we receive God's best. That's how we please God by living, by faith in his word. Faith gives us the ability to believe God. In Hebrews 11 and 6, it says, But without faith it's impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe two things. Number one, that he is. And then the second, that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek 
him. Introduce the seeker. Are we seekers? Seekers that will have a reward coming to us because we believe God. And we believe he rewards those who seek after him. Jeremiah 29 and 13, God says to his people, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. The problem is that many of our hearts are divided. There are so many distractions that uh, cry for our attention, our time, our energy, and our effort. So many things to take us away from our primary calling, the reason we were born naturally into this world is to spend our lifetime getting to know God and coming to an understanding that He is the Lord. Well, when will we find Him? God said, when you seek me. When will we find Him? God says, when you search for me with all your heart. And then there's an interesting story of Jesus who had what the world would think a happen chance meeting, but it was completely ordained that he go way out of his way for an encounter with one woman, the woman at the well. She was a Samaritan woman, so already there's racist in the mix because the Jews, and Jesus was a Jew, were not supposed to have anything to do with the Samaritans. Jesus and his disciples were traveling in ministry one day, and they were going this way. They were going to Jericho, and Jesus said, oh, but I need to go through Samaria. That raised their eyebrows, I'm sure, because we stay away from there. We have nothing to do with them. They're not Jewish, and Jericho is this way. Notice what Jesus said, I need to go through Samaria. And of course, we know why now. Because when he got there, there was a woman that he ministered to and changed her life. It happened at Jacob's well. I remember when I was a, an 18-year-old boy. I drank water out of Jacob's well. Went to that site in Israel where Jesus met this woman and ministered to her and here's how the conversation went in John chapter 4, beginning at verse 20. This woman asked Jesus. She said, our fathers worshiped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the right place where one ought to worship. And Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. Don't have to go to Toronto. Don't have to go to Pensacola. Don't have to go to Asbury University in Kentucky. The hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth for the Father is seeking such to worship him. Now, introduce the ultimate seeker. Not only are we seeking after God and the promises, we will find him when we seek him with all of our heart. But at the same time, while we're seeking to know him, he is seeking worshipers. Then he said, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. So that's how it's done. We get to know God better when we worship him in spirit and in truth. While we are pursuing God, seeking after him, he is pursuing us. In fact, I think he takes the first step toward us. A lot of people think, well, we found him. But I believe he came looking for us first. And of course, the most concrete evidence is he sent his son Jesus to buy us to give him a legal right to have lordship over us. And then another biblical reason, I believe I can say without apology, that he seeks after us before we seek after him. 
is the Bible says it's the goodness of God that leads you to a place of repentance. We didn't even do that in our own goodness. It's his goodness that began the process of bringing us to him so that we could get to know him and understand he is Lord. Another thing Jesus said to that woman, he said to her, you worship what you do not know. I have to study on that a while. I'm not ready to talk anymore about that. <laughs> Other than I believe it's the truth because he said it. But he said to her, you worship what you do not know. How many are worshiping what they don't even know? It is a possibility. And Jesus pointed it out to her. In Matthew chapter 7, in verse 7, it gives us the promise to those of us who seek. It said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. And I like the next verse. For everyone who asks receives. Well, but I feel like I'm probably an exception to that. No, nope, it says everyone. Well, but my experience doesn't uh, confirm that. Well, but everyone. Sometimes one word is good to know. Everyone who asks receives. And he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Here's the bottom line. We don't need to plan on taking a road trip or a sky trip to get to know God. His preference is Jesus. You are welcome here. And it starts with each one of us individually. Before it can become a collective or a corporate or a body-wide thing, it must first become personal to each of us. And there's only one reason we don't have personal revival. That is because we're willing to live without it. I'm going to close with one more verse. It's John chapter 14 and verse 7. And listen to what Jesus said to his disciples. He said, if you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. I receive that for my life as I get to know God better every day and hour by hour. Jesus said to his disciples, if you had known me, you would have known my father also. But then he prophesied and drew a line and beginning now. He said, beginning right now, it begins right now. And he said, from now on, you know him and you have seen him. May this prophetic word spoken by our Lord to his followers on that day be realized in our day as we follow him and get to know him. Jesus, you are welcome here. Would you stand with me, please? Everyone stand as the prayer team comes. They make themselves available for prayer and personal ministry in just a moment. Bow your heads, if you would, please. Every head bowed. Father, thank you for the privilege it is to come into your presence we not only do this on Sunday morning, but we live our life that way in the presence of God. And the beautiful thing about the Sabbath is all of us who've been worshiping privately, personally, all week long, we find out on Sunday morning, we've just been rehearsing for a corporate worship service. So we've given you the worship you deserve this morning and thank you for giving the best you have to your people Jesus you are welcome here in my life in this church in the body 
in this city. Jesus, you are welcome here. We don't have to go find you somewhere. We don't have to leave where we are. We can simply be still and know that you are the Lord. We confess your Lordship over our lives and over our city today. In Jesus' name. If you're here with a need for prayer and you need the word of the Lord spoken over you, then our prayer team ministers are ready to pray for you. It just takes a minute or two. No need to take heavy baggage out that you brought in today. You can leave it at the altar. These men and women will pray over you, agree with you in prayer for your need to be met, and minister the word of the Lord to you. So if you have a need in your life for prayer before you go out the front door, come forward now and receive ministry. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. I look forward to seeing many of you at the uh, Celebration of Life service for...